Refrigerators are one of the most overlooked household appliances, until they stop working correctly. Then people tend to notice. But if you don't know what the basic parts of your fridge are and how they work, you could end up spending a lot of money on something you probably could have figured out pretty easily on your own. In this video, I'll go over the basic parts of a refrigerator and how they work to keep everything cool. Which is really important to know if you want to diagnose a leak or any other problem with your refrigerator accurately. And I'll give you a heads up right now, there are a lot of parts in a refrigerator and a lot of them are required to keep everything cool. But to make it a little easier to follow, I'll put the part name and description on the screen. There are also separate chapters for each part. That way, should you ever need it, you can come back to this video and find the part name and description easily. Thermodynamically speaking, refrigerators don't create cold, they remove heat. Or more specifically, they absorb the heat from the food inside of your fridge and move it to different parts of the fridge that are outside of the cooling compartments. Most residential refrigerators, at least in the US, all have the same basic cooling system, commonly referred to as a sealed system. Similar to the internet, a refrigerator sealed system is a series of tubes. Unlike the internet, these tubes are made of metal and contain refrigerant. It's called a sealed system because this series of metal tubes is completely sealed off from the outside atmosphere. This is necessary because our atmosphere is humid, and humid air contains water, and water freezes at a much higher temperature than refrigerant does. Because refrigerant remains a liquid, even at extremely low temperatures, this allows your freezer to get to temperatures well below the freezing point of any food or drink you put into it. And yes, it's called refrigerant, not Freon. Freon is a manufacturer of many different kinds of refrigerant. However, not all refrigerant is manufactured by Freon. Think of it like the Kleenex versus tissues of refrigeration. The types of metal commonly used in a refrigerator sealed system are aluminum, copper, and steel, depending on the part. Because these three types of metals conduct heat easily, but have different properties that work better for certain parts. The heart of the entire refrigerator is called the compressor, which is the electronic device that actually pumps refrigerant through the system. The outer shell of the compressor is usually made of steel for its durability. Because in addition to the compressor being the most important moving part in the entire system, its job is specifically to compress the refrigerant molecules from a low pressure gaseous state to a high pressure gaseous state. Compressing the refrigerant molecules means forcing them closer together, which increases the energy and, therefore, the temperature. When you have a mechanical part that's forcibly increasing the temperature and pressure of a gaseous substance over and over again for years and years, having a durable outer shell is pretty important. After exiting the compressor as a hot, high-pressure gas, the refrigerant then makes its way through a long series of twisty, turny tubes known as the condenser, also commonly referred to as the condenser coils. As the hot refrigerant makes its way through the condenser, it begins releasing that heat into the outside atmosphere outside of the sealed system. To assist with cooling the refrigerant, a condenser fan blows air over the condenser coils. During this cooling process, the hot, gaseous refrigerant begins to condense into a warm, liquid state hence the name condenser. But it's still at a high pressure because the system is sealed with no extra space for the molecules to spread out. That warm liquid refrigerant then makes its way to the tube with the smallest diameter in the entire system, known as the capillary tube, or cap tube for short. The capillary tube is much smaller than the condenser tube, so the flow of refrigerant molecules is restricted. This slower flow separates the refrigerant molecules from each other a bit more, decreasing the pressure, and therefore the temperature, as the refrigerant moves through. As the cold liquid refrigerant exits the capillary tube, it enters the evaporator, which is another long, bendy tube, similar to the condenser in its bendiness, but is otherwise quite different. The refrigerator's evaporator is the coldest part of the sealed system, located inside the cooling compartment of the fridge. Because the evaporator tube is larger in diameter than the capillary tube, the refrigerant molecules are able to spread out even further. With extra room to move around, the pressure and the temperature of the refrigerant drop, making it and the evaporator very cold. This also causes some of the refrigerant to turn into a gas. However, most of it remains liquid. Evaporators are often made from aluminum because the pressure inside them is much lower, meaning a stronger metal, like steel, isn't necessary, and because aluminum is an excellent conductor of heat. This enables the refrigerant inside the evaporator to absorb the heat from inside the refrigerated compartment more easily and efficiently. In addition to the evaporator, refrigerators also have an evaporator fan that helps circulate the air inside the refrigerator and also bring warm air towards the evaporator to absorb. On its own, an evaporator cools similarly to a giant block of ice. This means that without the evaporator fan, a refrigerator would cool a lot more unevenly, more like a cool 
cooler. The refrigerator's door gaskets also play a vital part in this process, keeping the refrigerated compartment sealed from outside humidity and temperature. This ensures that the only heat being absorbed by the refrigerant is that of the items inside the refrigerated compartment. As the refrigerant in the evaporator absorbs heat, the pressure and temperature begin to rise, and the refrigerant begins turning into a gas as it makes its way back into the compressor. And thus, the refrigerator's cooling, or rather heat removing, cycle continues. But wait, there's more. Because that's just the cooling cycle. The air we breathe contains moisture, and because the temperature of the refrigerant that flows through the evaporator is below the freezing point of water, frost begins to build up on the outside of the evaporator during the cooling cycle. If this frost is left alone, it will continue to accumulate, eventually engulfing the entire evaporator and evaporator fan in compacted frost and ice. And as mentioned previously, if there's no evaporator fan to circulate the cold air, the refrigerator is going to start cooling a lot more unevenly. From the time the first residential electric refrigerator was introduced in 1913, all the way until 1954, every refrigerator had to be periodically, manually defrosted. This process took hours to complete, and was usually done by unplugging the fridge, removing all the items from inside, then melting all of the accumulated frost and ice, usually by placing bowls of hot water inside the fridge to help speed up the process. In 1954, Amana, now owned by Whirlpool, introduced the first self-defrosting residential refrigerator. Most modern-day residential refrigerators are self-defrosting, which means they'll cool until they reach a specific temperature, then they'll turn off the compressor and cooling fans and enter into a defrost cycle. Self-defrosting refrigerators incorporate a defrost heater to melt the accumulated frost off the evaporator. The frost melts off the evaporator and turns into liquid water, which then drains into a shallow pan with a drain hole beneath the evaporator, continuing to make its way through the refrigerator via a drain tube. This drain tube leads down into the refrigerator's drip tray, which is located near the condenser and compressor. The heat radiating from the compressor and condenser help to evaporate the water inside the drip tray, while the condenser fan blows the hot, humid air out from underneath the refrigerator speeding up the process. And when everything is functioning correctly, the water in the drip tray will evaporate as though the refrigerator has its own built-in rain cycle. And the journey of the refrigerant through the sealed system continues on. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.